A man who terrorized a small, quiet village out in England while wearing a full-on rubber get-up has been being hunted by the police for several years. What does he do? What does he want? And why does he choose this outfit in particular? Before we move on, I'd like to give a shout out to PDS Debt for sponsoring this video. I know that a lot of you out there are like me, wishing that there was a better way to pay off debt. Maybe you're struggling with credit card debt, personal loans, collection agencies, or even medical bills. It's no secret that inflation just keeps going up and gas prices aren't really getting any better either. Well, a little bit, but not much. Maybe now's the time to start thinking about how to pay off those debts. If you're making payments on your debt every month and the balances just aren't going down, then this is for you. PDS Debt is giving viewers of this channel a free debt savings analysis just for completing the 30-second online debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. You'll get a full breakdown on how to save on interest each month and the quickest way to take care of your debt. PDS Debt rolls all of your payments into one low 0% interest monthly payment. Anyone with more than $10,000 in debt or more qualifies, and the cool thing is that there's no credit score required. Fair and even bad credit is also accepted. You can end up saving thousands in interest and fees, and not to mention pay off your debts in a fraction of the time. Like I said, PDS Debt is offering free debt analysis to my listeners just for completing the quick and easy debt assessment at pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. That's pdsdebt.com slash diretrip. And now back to the content. From 2019 all the way up until 2022, a man decked out in a full rubber gimp suit who was described by witnesses as touching his groin, grunting, and breathing heavily terrorized a village out in Somerset, England called Claverham. Sometimes he would jump out and scare people, sometimes he would approach them menacingly, and sometimes he would stare through their windows in the middle of the night. In July of 2019, the police in the area had been receiving what, at the time, was a small number of reports that someone had been jumping out and scaring the locals. These incidents started out sounding fairly benign, even laughable, until one particular incident one Thursday night at around 11.30pm that resulted in a full-on police search operation. A young woman in her 20s had what she understandably called a terrifying encounter that night. While walking in Claverham down a dark village road, she came across the man of the hour, the gimp suit guy. From now on, I'm gonna call him Rubber Man. I'm sure a lot of you get the reference. Rubberman jumped into her view, charging at her in his off-putting get-up, complete with red X's stitched over the eyes and what appeared to be a creepy grin. Fearing the worst, she decided to take out her phone and snap a quick picture of the man. I was walking along with my torch and looked up to see someone charging at me in a full black rubbery suit and managed to take a picture, she said. He kept coming towards me and was touching his groin, grunting and breathing heavily. As I tried to take a step back, he was right in front of my face and he put his leg forward. I was just trying to assess the situation in my head quickly. Everything was running through my head. I thought, this is it, I'm gonna get attacked. I was looking around thinking, oh my god. The rubber man approached the woman more and more closely until he was within grabbing distance of her. This was when she pushed the man and screamed at him, likely something along the lines of, go away. After this, the man took off running backwards toward the main road, only to slip off into the night and disappear. Immediately after, she phoned the police as quickly as she could. The police, obviously concerned after hearing about such a nightmarish encounter, conducted a large-scale search in which they employed search dogs and even a helicopter to help find the man. In the end, though, this extensive search turned up absolutely nothing. Somehow, this man in a rubber suit had gotten away completely unnoticed. The victim has gone on to say that the entire experience has hugely affected her. However, she chose to speak out on the incident as she was afraid it might happen again. She told the BBC in an interview, I don't want to go out. It's not just a man jumping out at me going boo. Every time I close my eyes, I just see that face. She said, adding, I would never forgive myself if this happened to someone else and I hadn't said anything. The whole ordeal left her afraid to even leave her home for quite some time afterward. It was around this time that the Somerset police admitted that they had been receiving calls about this particular individual for a while now. They said to the public, We're aware of concerns relating to a man acting suspiciously in the Claverham Yatton area. While we're keeping an open mind about the motive for these incidents, it's clear the individual responsible is deliberately attempting to cause alarm to the men and women he's approaching. While no one has been hurt during the incidents, we fully appreciate the distress these actions have caused victims. 
Fresh out of Leeds, they asked anyone who might know anything to contact the police as quickly as they could. In a bid to kind of reassure the public, increase security, and hell, hopefully even find the man, they did beef up security in the local area and start more patrols. A few nights later, it seemed that all of this had done the trick. The police announced on July 15th that they had arrested a 28-year-old male suspect in relation to the incident. Not only that, but two nights later, they announced a second arrest, saying that they grabbed a 34-year-old man on suspicion of indecency offenses in connection to the case. However, this all amounted to nothing. The two were released due to insufficient evidence. For now, it seemed that the rubber man was free to roam the streets. The police did inform the public, though, that no more reports of the man had been filed since the incident that night that resulted in the massive search, saying, Thankfully, we've not received any more reports of similar incidents since the most recent report of a man wearing a black bodysuit approaching a woman on July 11th. For now, the town was at peace. This period of peace, however, would not last. After a while, the citizens of Somerset began to fear that the rubber man may be back with a vengeance. This news came after it was reported that the rubber man was once again spotted peering through windows and watching a couple in Claverham one night at around midnight in September of 2021. The cops were called, of course, but by the time they arrived at the scene, he was already long gone and they were unable to locate him. Either way, the word was out. The aptly named Gimp Man was back in action. One woman, in an interview with BBC, explained to them about how the stories of the man had traumatized her kids, saying, I've got older children, and even my kids are saying, it's the Gimp Man again. They're really freaked out by it. She continued, saying, But it could be anyone, and I want to come from a practical point of view and do something to help people feel safer. I'm not too bothered to walk around on my own, but it freaks my children out, and I want them to feel safer. Smaller incidents involving the man were reported here and there, up until a much more publicized incident occurring almost one year later in June of 2022. This was when a 19-year-old teacher's aide and her boyfriend came into contact with the rubber man himself. It was a confrontation that would leave the both of them traumatized. The woman, named Kara and her boyfriend got out of a taxi one night, the 26th of June, at around 1am and started walking to their home in the village of Yatton in Somerset. As they approached the roundabout, the boyfriend suddenly saw something in the distance, writhing around, and told Kara, there's a man. The man in the latex suit shambled up to the two of them. He stood with his legs spread far apart, really showcasing his junk, and outstretched his arms as if he were proud. He evidently wanted to make a splash and provide the couple with a memorable encounter that night. He succeeded, with Kara saying, I'm still really shaken up by it. I've got the image in my head of him walking towards me and staring, and I did not have a clue what his intention was. I dread to think what would have happened if I would have been on my own. Once what she described as the most terrifying experience of her life occurred, the two of them took off running toward their home and called the police. The police once again came out and combed the area, but never did find any trace of the rubber man. The couple described him as being six feet tall and slim, but couldn't provide much more information on his appearance given the full body suit. Afterwards, extra patrols were carried out as usual, but they never did turn up anything. This was, until this point, the 15th reported encounter with the Rubber Man. Police weren't sure if all of these cases involved the same perpetrator, or if it started with one guy that branched off into a bunch of copycat cases, or if it had been multiple men from the beginning. All in all, they knew next to nothing about this man, what his motivations could be, or more pressingly, when he might come back. Nothing came again of the case until October of 2022. This was when the citizens of Somerset got word that the rubber man's reign of terror might have come to an end for good, and they may finally have some closure. Two 19-year-old British lads were walking home from a birthday party one night in the early hours of the morning in the village of Cleve. This was when they came across the dreaded rubber man, a tall, dark figure covered from head to toe. Only this time, he was seemingly covered in animal excrement. The two young men, first seeing the man, initially thought he was some sort of drunkard due to the way he was moving forward. He was shambling around like a zombie, coming towards them. As he approached the two men, he took a step up onto the pavement where they were standing, arched his back in a horrific manner, and flopped down to the ground without even putting his hands out to catch himself. This was when the man started flailing around on the ground, writhing around in place and stretching his arms out toward the two men. They said that his speech was high-pitched, unnerving, and that it resembled some sort of demon language. Oh. 
At this point, they felt that this was definitely a strange enough occurrence to take some video, and good on them for that. Later, speaking to the BBC, the man who recorded the video described the encounter, telling the news outlet, I don't want this guy to be seen as a boogeyman, but this kind of thing, this invisible threat that he could be anywhere, it's indirectly causing fear. Describing how the man was covered in a dark bodysuit from head to toe, he added that he was also covered in mud, at least what appeared to be mud at the time. However, unlike regular mud, he emitted a certain odor. His outfit was shiny, with some sort of liquid, and he was glistening in the torchlight, and he smelled really earthy. After he had gone, you could still smell it. The two young men were initially, for good reason, concerned with their safety. At first, they were in shock, just not really knowing what to do. But eventually, upon realizing that the man wasn't really attacking them, the whole situation started to feel ridiculous. The absurdity of the whole ordeal ended up breaking the tension, and the two men just started laughing at him. They realized that this was the Gimp Man himself, a man of local legend, someone the two had heard many tales about. Once the Rubber Man realized he wasn't scaring the two men, the whole incident seemed to get awkward for him. His clear attempt at frightening the two had not worked. Instead, it had backfired and he was being made fun of instead. Mate, Joyce, society. Do you want a ticket? Well, I can't actually lie. Did you s*** it up? Can I have a ticket? You can have a ticket. Hold on. Hey. Say that. Say that. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. The man who recorded the video went on to add, The guy is a legend around here and he's been doing it for years. My mate is six foot nine and is a force to be reckoned with. Once he had realised the initial shock had turned into humour, he got up and took the cigarette. Who the f*** just you like uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have a cigarette, man. Uh, you want know oh, leave on the bench. Once the rubber man got up and started to walk away, the two men urged him to get home safely. To which, surprisingly, the rubber man responded, clearly stating in a normal voice, Oh, I'll try. Fair play. Alright, lad. All right, I, I, get him safe, alright? I'll try. Alright, cheers, lad. Once he was out of sight, the two men went ahead and called up the police. A few officers in the local area arrived in just a couple of minutes. Then the day had finally come. That day, in the early hours of the morning, October 25th, 2022, the police scoured the area around Miller Road in Cleve. Again, they went all out, bringing in police dogs and search helicopters. It was then, after a while, that they found their man. A man dressed in a full-body latex suit with blue latex gloves covered in mud, leaves, and a goopy substance. The similarity between the incident that day and the previous reports of the rubber man prompted the police to act as quickly as they could. They said themselves that they were determined to identify the individual or individuals responsible and stop them. They didn't want to miss their chance to finally catch the man, and they ultimately succeeded. The man who had caused so much trauma to local citizens was finally in police custody. The man who has yet to be named and may remain unnamed was arrested on suspicion of causing a public nuisance. He was placed into police custody until a few days later when he was released on bail. All we even know about the man was that they said he was in his 30s, and that's pretty much it. As per condition of his bail, the rubber man is ordered to remain in his home between the hours of 9pm and 6am and present himself to a police officer whenever requested. What exactly he gained from all of this is still largely unclear. In none of the encounters did he ever attack anyone, he never touched a single person. In some cases, he even ran off after being confronted. However, seeing that he simply gave up and wandered off after his failed attempt to scare the last two men, I think it's safe to say that he just gets off on scaring people. If he couldn't do that, he simply lost interest. Is it a fetish thing? I mean, who can really say? We can say probably, but who can really definitively say? Maybe he just felt that this get up would be particularly traumatizing, and if so, he's not really wrong. I guess for now, we just don't know. Once again, thank you for watching my video. If you don't mind, go ahead and give it a like, it really helps me out in the algorithm, and if you like content like this, feel free to subscribe. If you don't mind, go ahead and follow me on social media, I mean, you know how YouTube is with channels like this, if anything were to ever happen to me, that would probably be the only place you'd ever hear about it. If you want to support the channel even further, I do have a Patreon account, which I keep linked down in the description below, where you can see videos early, ad-free, and uncensored. Speaking of which, shout out to the top patrons. We've got Angie, El Palmieri, Rebecca Padilla, Pao Yang, Alice Malice Tentacles, April Diamond, Starfade, Astral, Grack, Kevin, Rick of Work in Progress USA, Sass Johnson, Marianne McCurdy, 
Buttery Frankus, Wafrans, Jules Latona, Arctic Cat, Alan Damiani, Marsh, Rinsenstein, Kim Peek, Lex Luthor, Lux Alpaca, Charity, Scoochie Main, Jackie, and Mark Barnett. You are all very kind. Thank you for the help with the puppies. They are home and they are eating. Unfortunately, they are eating each other. We'll tackle that problem next time. This has been your host, Kyle. Thank you and good night. Um, I don't know if you'll air this, but everyone go subscribe to Fox Kimbo and make sure to subscribe to Diet Drip.